Hey YouTube, it's Chris, K2CJB, and K2CJB Radio, and today we're starting a series of videos on installing an HF rig in the truck. And this video today, we'll be mounting the antennas. We're going with two hamstick antennas. We'll get into more detail on those. And we'll also talk about some of the techniques that I've picked up online on some of the different websites that are out there. We'll put links for those in the video, in the description below. Um, we're gonna mount we're gonna use is the Fire Stick Door Edge Swivel Mount. That's what we're going to mount the antennas with, putting two antennas on the truck, one on each side of the, the tailgate, and we'll, uh, we'll show you how we do that. Now, when spotting this, we want to make sure that we will clear this cable and the tailgate. When the tailgate goes up, cable clears, there's the mount, and it doesn't block the tail light. So I think somewhere in here is where we're going to go. So we'll mark this, drill some holes, and mount it. We'll uh, do a little pilot hole first. We'll get in there with a regular size bit. Okay, now we're going to mount it. Again, using the star washers under the screws. And um, don't ask me how I know this. I've learned this the hard way. <laughs> we don't want to use drivers on these. Just a regular screwdriver will work. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> okay. There it is. That is pretty solid. The shavings there, but we're good. Now we'll get to the other side. And here we go. Nice and solid. Both mounts. We're remounting this one because this is the way it was on and I wanted it so the flat part of this plate was on the top. So I had to take it off and I'm going to spin it around and put it back together. You always have to think it all the way through. Okay. Now we got them both mounted where we want them. And now we'll put on the, the 3 8 inch uh, stud mounts. The key to these 3 8 inch stud mounts is this tiny little flange that has to fit through the hole on the plate. Without it, you have a dead short. So we'll put that on top. I've got mine with the SO239 so it can receive a PL259 on the bottom. The nylon washer first, then the flat washer. It comes with a lock washer and then the stud mount. And a couple of wrenches and we can snug it down until the lock washer sits nice and tight. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. Make sure it's centered. Now what I'm going to do, just to confirm that nothing slid around when I snugged it down, is I'm going to get an ohmmeter out and just make sure we don't have a dead short between the center conductor and ground. But we'll snug things up first and then we'll do that. Okay. That's correct. Center conductor to the post and nothing to ground. Good. Let's check the other side. Nothing to ground, center conductor to the post, and that's what we want. For running the cables, I'm thinking the best path for the truck is to connect to the antenna mount and go underneath. Um, there is an opening in the back of the cab to get me into the cab between the bed and the cab. So. Uh, I'm going to try that path first. All right. Now we'll have to figure out... Actually, you know what? I don't think I want to come through that side, do I? No, I think we're going to come through the bottom of the bumper. Nice opening right here. And there we go. Look at that. Now 
Okay, there's one. Now I'll do the other side. So this is the driver's side, and here's my cable coming through the bumper. And right up there, right here, there's a uh, little cable loom I think I can follow going up to the front. Well, uh, after a lot of grunting and groaning underneath the truck, there's the two cables, and they are all tucked in underneath. Um, I found some cable looms to tie onto. I found some um, frame components to tie off to. I managed to flip it over the gas tank uh, from the other side to get to this side of the truck. So a little bit of grunting and groaning, but we got it in there. So now we have to get it into the cab. Well, after a lot of grunting and groaning, and trying to get that seat back off, which is a bear. If anyone owns a 2015 F-250, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> well, there are the two cables. Got them through the hole on the back of the... I don't know if you'll see it through here. Yeah, that's them. Coming through the back of the cab. So, let's just put the antennas up and see what we get. Here are the monoband antennas I went with. The Shark 40 meter and 20 meter. That's what we're going to start with uh, operating mobile and uh, I'll get into that later as we go further into the series here. So what I'm going to do right now is just mount them. I may do a quick tune on them. Uh, we haven't done bonding yet. We haven't done anything else like that yet. So there's a lot more work to do but I want to just see how they look on the truck. Well here they are installed. 40 meter is closest to us. You can see the whips up on top. Not too bad. They look pretty good. You may want to know why I picked the Shark uh, antennas uh, instead of their competitors. You know, when I was researching this on eHam and other sites, um, the other antennas, uh, there were a lot of complaints about the set screws for the, the whips uh, stripping out. But uh, the Shark didn't seem to have that problem. There's a lot of great reviews on them. So I contacted Universal Radio. It looks like they're the only ones that carry them and um, got them from them. So great price. Look, they're 20 bucks, right? 20 bucks a piece. So. These days, I think 20 and 40 will do fine here in the truck. And we'll see how, how that all works out. So um, I'm going to, just for laughs, I'm going to try a quick antenna tune just to see how they look with the analyzer. There's no bonding done in the truck yet. We haven't adjusted the antennas. I'm just going to take it out of the box and see how it works. Well, because I'm a ham and I have to keep tinkering with things, um, I did do a test. So here's what I'm going to do. I will show you again. I'm going to go, this is at 14, 250. This will be the 20 meter. There you go. You can see it now. The 20 meter antenna and uh, let's do a SWR just as a quick SWR scan see what I made a couple of tweaks and I want you to see how she does 14 to 50 that's less than 1.2 to 1 it's got a respectable bandwidth on it so I think uh, the 20 meter antenna is gonna work fine so let's take a look at 40 so here we are now looking at 7225 and let's take a look at the and again, we're just looking to see if we're close to resonant. And you'll see, I made a couple of tweaks and I've got us now at 7225. It's about two to one. So, you know, I know I need to put a shunt coil on it and we still are gonna do the bonding and there's a lot more work we're gonna do, but it's good to know that we can get it uh, pretty much near where we wanna operate. So that's, uh, that's good, I'm happy with that. It's been a long afternoon. Uh, we mounted two fire stick door jam mounts um, into the back of the truck, back of the bed. And we put, um, two shark monoband HF antennas, one for 20 meters and one for 40 meters there. Ran the cable, RG8X by the way is the cable. Came in through the back of the, uh, the cab here and we have it here on the floor. We did a quick, um, quick resonance test. Um, I made a couple of adjustments to the antennas. And um, so next is uh, to bond the, the vehicle. We have to do all that RF bonding with, uh, with braid all around the truck. Uh, and again, uh, on, on Allen's site, uh, K0BG, uh, there's a lot of great information on how to do that. In fact, I'm going to uh, use some of those tips uh, when, we, when we bond this truck. So that's the next project. So I hope this one helped you. If it did, um, subscribe and hit like um, and hit the bell, and you'll see when the rest of the videos come out. Um, and it would be a big help for me. So again, thanks for watching. This is Chris, 73, from K2CJB.